What is going on, guys? My name is Jonathan. This is Comic Book Cinema. And today we have the honor and pleasure of being joined by the trifecta of wonderful gentlemen from M6P. Mr. Darren, how are you doing tonight? I'm quite fine. How are you, Jonathan? Oh, I can't complain. I'm, I'm so happy that you're on the show, man. <laughs> Jared, what's hey. up, man? I'm, I'm here, man, and I, I'm happy to be on the show, and I'm happy to be here with the three of you. Tim. I'm always happy to be here, man. I'm ready to have some nerd talk. It's great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let, let's delve straight into things, shall we? Today, we're going to talk about if we had to rank the current Disney Plus Marvel shows. We have five Disney Plus Marvel shows so far. Where do we rank these shows? I guess we could start things off with what if I think that's a pretty safe starting point. I like some episodes on what if I think that there's a lot of cool stuff to be seen. And we've had several indications that we're going to be getting some continuation from what if in some of the films, we get the evil Dr. Strange and the uh, teaser that we got recently for the Dr. Strange multiverse of madness trailer. And there's also rumors and rumblings that we might even get Peggy Carter or Agent Carter coming through a wormhole or something in, in one of the future films. So I think that What If is a solid, for an animated show, it is very, very solid. Whether or not that I would rank it above any of the other live action four, I don't think that I quite would. The other offerings we've gotten from Marvel on the live action front are really 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 well done so i can't rank what if higher than any of those but like i said to be an animated feature it's very solid what do you guys think yeah so for me what if was fifth on my list as well just because it was hit and miss episodes there'd be fantastic episode followed by a oh okay episode and then another fantastic episode and then a why why did we even have that that episode so that was kind of what took me aback. Also, the, the animation, I know that they wanted it to be really cool, lifelike animation. But for me, the animation kind of came off as very video game-like uh, and not to the caliber that Marvel Studios can afford. I guess I'm a little bummed, too, because I know that sec season two is going to look like season one. They're, they're not going to improve it and have us a, a new style. For those reasons... That's why I've got what if at number five out of out of five. I would rank what if fifth as well. I, when I'm ranking these films, I, I rank them on overall enjoyability, like how much did I actually like it? And then the second thing I look at is what was the overall imp impact on the MCU moving forward? There might be something that I really like, but if it really is kind of a, an isolated story that doesn't have a lot to do with the rest of the MCU, then I, I probably could have done without it. So that's kind of the two things that I take into account. What if is one of those things that I kind of enjoyed it thinking that it was probably more of a hypothetical series than something that they're actually going to implement into the MCU. So knowing that they actually have plans to implement this stuff into the MCU, I actually am kind of disappointed about it because I, I kind of felt like it was it, it was an unnecessary direction. I know they wanted to introduce the multiverse concept, which talk to Jared, talk to anybody who's talked to me for a long time. If you've ever got about three hours, I can explain my whole problem with the multiverse concept, but we don't have time for that. I'm pretty much in that category where what if just didn't do it for me as far as most of the storylines that they presented just didn't meet up there. I'm not going to say there was nothing I enjoyed about it because there were things I enjoyed. I enjoyed it more as a hypothetical series. I, I'm just not really interested even in what season two is going to bring. So that's just kind of where I felt. I, it felt fifth on my list as well. They're going to make a season two of this? Yes. Yeah. But this is definitely, I mean, it's already my number five. I didn't even watch them all. But yeah, uh, to Jared's point, like we talked, we discussed this on a lot of the other uh, M6P episodes where like some episodes were great and some weren't. It's just like buying a CD, you know, back at a CD store in the mall or whatever. And it's like, uh, okay, it's a uh, Marvel, whatever. We're going to like some of it. We're not going to like all of it. But that, at the same time, that's kind of what I liked about What If. I didn't want to like them all. 
I still didn't watch a lot of them though, but I'm just saying. <laughs> what I liked about What If was it was a succinct story. It was just what each episode was its own little animal and you can just take it or leave it. And then by episode like four or five that you could see that they were trying to tie them all together. And then the finale was clear. They tied them all together. And it was like, it felt very forced to me for something that they really didn't have to do. You know, they already had my attention. They really didn't have to try to tie it all together and then try to tie it into the actual MCU. I actually kind of like that that they tied it with a little bow at the end. I thought that made it a little bit more tolerable. Like like you guys were saying, there was a lot it of- It had the exact effect. opposite effect for me. I was looking at it and I was just like, why did they have to try to do that? It felt like they were just trying to shove it all in there. And they I like the Guardians of the Multiverse. That was cool. I like that. But to each his own. So <laughs> speaking of which, I think that I'm definitely going to get some pushback for this. But hey, it's okay because <laughs> I can handle it. My number four is Loki. I think that Loki had some cool elements. I wasn't particularly the biggest fan of Sylvie. And there were some cool concepts. You know, Tim's favorite concept, the multiverse, was also kind of touched upon at the end of this series. You know, when I think of the action set pieces, there really wasn't a whole lot, for me at least, when I think of Loki. So I just think that we could have seen more, especially from Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it wasn't my favorite for sure. I still like the show. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed it more than What If. Yeah, that's kind of where it sits for me at number four. What you guys think? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you, Jonathan, that Loki would be my fourth as well. So I, and I've told you guys this before, I like laser shooting and superhero costumes and bright. And so Loki, not in his horned costume, wearing a tan jumpsuit for a majority uh, you know, of the episodes, dealing with these such fringe Marvel characters. But, and Sylvie, like, is this, so is this what we're going to get from the Enchantress in the MCU? Is this the, the best we're going to get? There were definitely some, some great spots in Loki. Definitely. Really, really fun. But there was a lot, I mean, episode four, for example, was extremely boring. They just walked around that that planet the entire episode. And then they went to a house and the lady was like defending her house and she needed to get in. Like the whole episode just walking around and talking. What is this Eternals? What is this? You know, so I just wasn't into that. The sixth episode was definitely the best by far. Alligator Loki, he's up on my shelf. You're not going to get a better MCU character than Alligator Loki as far as I'm concerned. And then to see kind of like comic book Loki save the day, just, you know, that episode almost puts it to the ranking number three for me. But for now, I'm going to keep it at number four. What about you, Mr. Collins? I may be in the minority here, but I actually really like the Loki series for several reasons. I, I think Tom Hiddleston has definitely deserved his own Marvel project for a long time. I think he, he has brought it in every single movie he's been in up to this point and to have his own series I really think that was a good nod to him overall I I think the idea behind Loki and having time kind of be the new way to kind of go in between different varying universes is something that's going to be very important moving forward I think that that's something that's going to come back to roost when we're looking at the multiverse of madness and all this other stuff that's coming up so that's all very important once again how I rank films based on whether I enjoyed it and the overall impact it had on the MCU. So knowing all of that now that's been introduced and then the introduction of, of Kang is just huge. That's kind of the big villain that, that I've been waiting on for a long time to be introduced into the MCU. So to have that kind of introduced the way that he was introduced, for a lot of people, it kind of fell flat because they didn't get the classic Kang character in the series. But now it is clear that that character that is a variant of the character that we met is going to be a big, big impact character, kind of the next big bad Thanos type character in the MCU. So I actually ranked Loki number two on my list because of that. So that's where I put, it's my number two overall. Where do you have Loki, Darren? I agree with a lot of what Tim said, but I'm not going to rank him quite or rank it the series quite as high, but he, Loki's my number three because what if is terrible? Unless you like certain episodes, I guess. Yeah, Loki, right? Uh, he's number three. Uh, guess what's number four, Jonathan? The Falcon and Winter Soldier. That's my <laughs> number four. Hands down. I know you don't like that. I know you don't. 
Oh, your alligator. But Loki's your my number alligator. three. I'm actually curious. Now. I'm really curious because, like, man, Tim, you have some good points. So I'm really curious to know what your number three is. I'll keep it simple. That's where I, yeah. Darren's, <laughs> Darren's busting the whole entire format of this show apart. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So let's talk about let's talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier since you brought it up. This this is going to be in this group in this particular group is going to be the unpopular opinion, but <laughs> to me, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is number one, firmly number one. Every single episode ended with a cliffhanger, edge of your seat. Like, are you kidding me? I can't believe that just happened. I got to see the next episode to see what happens. What are the repercussions going to be for Captain America cracking his shield over this guy's skull in front of all these people with cell phones in our today's society? The action set pieces. I mean, this show starts off with a helicopter sequence that is just beyond epic. And not only is it the best thing we've ever seen in Marvel television or DC television, but it is quite comparable to a lot of action sequences. Dare I say that action sequence is better than most or all action sequences in Spider-Man No Way Home. As far as the choreography, the way it was executed, it was just so cool. And, and that was the very beginning of the first episode. I absolutely love everything about this show. We get the Contessa, uh, Valentina Allegra, little cameo appearance there. We get John Walker. I loved, absolutely loved John Walker in this show. I think that they did a really good job of bringing John Walker into the real world and showing you that torn character that he is. A lot was put on this guy's shoulders, right, to be the new Captain America. And, you know, he just kind of crumbled under pressure and lost it and snapped. So, and it also goes back to Captain America, the first Captain America film. Why are we not putting a good soldier in the shoes of Captain America? Well, it, it can't just be a good soldier. He has to be a good man. and. Uh, like I said, it's the unpopular opinion in this group, but I absolutely love that show. Every episode left me like on the edge of my seat, like literally salivating, thinking of what's going to happen on the next episode. Now, I've said this before, too. I don't always agree with putting political agendas in shows and things like that. And I understand why people have more of a problem with it because of that. But at the end of the day, it's my favorite. What do you guys think about Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Oh, well, I'll tell you what, Jonathan, to your point, you said cliffhangers, right? Yep. You love those cliffhangers. You Did you read Goosebumps when you were a kid? R.L. Stein, you know? I did. Yeah. All his books ended with a cliffhanger. Are you still reading his books or are you watching Marvel stuff? <laughs> <laughs> think about the Marvel movie, though. <laughs> The post-credit so, sequence, it's always a cliffhanger, right? The, yeah, that, the, that means it's terrible writing. <laughs> the big thing about the big thing about Falcon and the Winter Soldier is it was very hot and cold. That and and some of the, some of the Marvel series have been either front loaded or back loaded with stuff. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier kind of came out like gangbusters, just like you said, Jonathan. That helicopter sequence and a lot of the action that they had, they kind of front loaded it with the action, which was great. I loved that, and it, it made things a lot more watchable, and it made things just so exciting. And I agree that there were things, there were elements because of all that. They kind of had me on the edge of my seat, but then we, we kind of got to a point where they kind of started using a lot of filler type stuff and the storyline kind of got too busy with a lot of things. Are we supposed to be focused on the flag smashers? Are we supposed to be focused on the Wakandans? Are we supposed to be focused on, you know, Walker and, and Battlestar? What, what are we supposed to be focused on? You know, who, who, which direction are we supposed to be looking at? You know, look over here, don't look over here kind of thing. And then, you know, we had a 15 minute sequence of two guys working on a boat and we had a, we had a 1980s, we had a 1980s montage uh, for, for working out with the shield and uh, er everything was, it got to the point where there was just a lot of filler. My problems with the film went far beyond any of the political stuff that you're talking about before I even got to that, that level with the stuff where, where I was, was just that the series probably could have only, it could have been wrapped up in about four episodes and been just fine but they kind of tried to fill out the rest of the episodes. And because of that, I also have Falcon and the Winter Soldier number four, Darren. So. I forgot. I'm glad you reminded me. I forgot about the Wakandans being involved. To me, that brought a whole new level of excitement. Like I was like, are you kidding me? The Dormelas are going to be involved now. And on top of that, 
Don't forget about Baron Zemo. Mm -hmm. He was absolutely phenomenal in this show. And mm -hmm. I thought that added a whole, for me, that that's what brought it to a whole nother level as well. But yeah, Zemo I was excited was, about that. Zemo the, was the savior of the show. There's no argument there. Without Zemo, I think we probably would have been looking at a show where we were kind of like, click. I, I mean, this one was front loaded with a lot of action. There's no doubt about that. They had some great sequences. They had a lot of great chemistry between the actors, you know, between the actors that played Sam and Buck. That was just fantastic. I love the direction that they're going with Sharon Carter and having us que question certain things there. But um, I wasn't a big fan of that. <laughs> but the whole Sharon the Carter. whole thing, it just kind of left us, it just kind of left us feeling a little empty, I think, most of the time. But the one the one big thing that I think did happen in Falcon and the Winter Soldier that we all kind of like as soon as we heard the word, our our mouths dropped was Madripoor. We all heard it and we were like <gasps> Madripoor. They mentioned Madripoor. <laughs> and so uh, that, that was probably the one thing that, that got our attention, but it really wasn't, it didn't introduce what we wanted it to introduce. Let's put it that way. Everything that the both of you said, I was like, oh, I was going to say that. Oh, I was going to say that. So what I will say is that the Flag Smashers were just absolutely terrible. And I would rank them in the bottom three, probably MCU villains. And for me, that is that took away from Falcon and Winter Soldier being higher. I also feel that they nerfed Bucky in many ways with his powers to elevate Sam. You know, Sam is lifting up a car. Sam is a human with a rocket pack and some wings. You know, Bucky gets taken out in the sixth episode. I don't even remember what it was. And I was just like, this guy has a super soldier serum. Like, this dude is, is jacked. He can... He should be able to show Falcon how to throw the shield instead of Falcon just playing out in the yard, throwing the shield into a tree. I, I think a huge deterrent was like what Tim said was the boat. You know, this whole other sea story about fixing a boat, getting a loan from a bank. I don't want to see my Marvel characters use the restroom and go to the grocery store and figure out how to pay their bills. Yeah. Like, that, I don't I care understand. if you get a bank loan. I don't care if you get a bank loan, Spider-Man. I don't care. Yeah. Like, I, I understand making it real. And I definitely feel like the like Falcon Winter Soldier was in set in the real world. But to have that kind of stuff just pushed away. On the positive, though, when they brought in the Dormelage, I remember like, wanting to yell up to Jennifer because she was asleep while I was watching the episode. Like, oh, my gosh. Guess who's here? Because I, I didn't even think about that. Baron yeah. Zemo was definitely a savior of the of the show, and they took him out way too quickly. He I had agree. some a, a great scene in the shipyard and put on his mask, and they took him away. So very, I you know, get, very get anticlimactic of, too. Very anticlimactic how he just surrenders. Yeah. Get rid of, rid of the flag smashers. Keep Baron Zemo. The Sharon thing was great up until the end when she. If she's not a scrawl, then she is totally out of character in who, who we've seen her to be and the legacy that she represents for the Carter family doesn't really make sense for me. And why are they trying to build her up? I don't care about her at all. Do you guys? Why are they trying to even build her up? Because there's so many... Uh, Disney. Disney. It, it was... Yeah, it felt like... The Sharon Carter thing definitely felt like it was one of those. It was like... I, I don't mind heel turns. Okay, I really don't. You know, for, for, if it adds a certain level of unpredictability to make to make a surprise, I really don't mind heel turns. That particular character was one that I, I'm with you, Jared. The legacy of the family and the ties to Steve Rogers and everything just kind of made it like I don't know that I would have gone that direction if I was the MCU. I will you say know, probably like John had said, like the defining moment of the entire series for me was when John Walker raises the shield, mm -hmm. goes down, everyone is shocked, and then the screen goes to black, and you have to wait another week. That was just like, mm -hmm. that was way up here in like top 10 Marvel Cinematic Universe moments for me. It's hard to beat something like that. That was just wild. And it and it was so represent, representative of how he is in the books, is that he, he wants to aspire to be Steve Rogers, but he's kind of a jerk <laughs> and he's always going to be in his shadows because he he can't do what Steve Rogers does. Yeah. Wyatt Russell did a great job. Let, let, let's, you know, let's give him props. He did a great job. 
he he was John Walker. He absolutely oh, yeah. embodied what John Walker was. There's no doubt yeah. about that. hundred percent. Let's talk about WandaVision. When it first hit the scene, that was the first like Disney plus Marvel show that, you know, had a lot of people talking, you know, a lot of people speculating some of those teases or what have you that they kind of seem like they might be building to something bigger ended up not being what we thought it would be or for lack of a better term a disappointment i enjoyed wandavision i have it ranked at number three i think that it did a lot of cool things it started off slow very slow but i think that it picked picked up in a in a really good way you know i thought that bringing in agent Wu that's his name right Wu. Agent Wu and Darcy kind of added a little value to the show. Also, the the conclusion and the whole Agatha Harkness. I think that they're, you know, although I don't think they should make an Agatha Harkness show just about Agatha Harkness, but uh, she was a likable character in that. The whole town of Westview and how she had it under her spell. You know, there was a lot of interesting elements about it. What else can you say? (laughs) I liked it. I have it ranked at number three. What do you guys think? I have it ranked at number one for me. WandaVision. Ooh. For me, uh, WandaVision was... So, well, I mean, what Kevin Feige did was he said, you know what? I'm going to figure out how to make a 1950s sitcom into a Marvel TV show. And I'm going to figure out how to make a 1960s and a 1970s and an 80s and a 90s. And I'm going to make it make sense in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's, he did an interview one time where he said that they look to make movies for genres, not genres for, for movies. Let's do a spy political thriller. Oh, let's do Winter Soldier. Let's do a TV show. Well, let's do WandaVision, you know? I think WandaVision is on another level than the, the other shows in that it broke any, like how, how, could, any, how could you do a Friends episode? like a nine episodes and make it make sense like that. It would be so difficult, but they made, they were able to make superheroes do nine episodes worth of this. And they, like you said, they brought in all these characters from the Marvel universe, like Jimmy Woo and Darcy, who no one wanted, but it kind of makes sense when she showed up. We got Monica Rambeau for the first time and very intrigued. I feel like WandaVision was great because at the end of every episode, my mind went in a totally different direction and I thought I had it figured out. And then the ep- episode four, I'm like, oh no, I know this is exactly what's going to happen. Hey, Darren, guess what? This is what's going to happen. Oh no, no. All right. Five, episode five. Now we're somewhere. It was totally, you could never figure out what was going to, was going to happen. It was wasn't Ralph, perfect. Was, was Ralph Boner a disappointment for you though? Cause I know that was a major disappointment for me. So I really don't want the Fox X-Men to be a part of the multiverse. I want it to just be its own separate thing. Uh, I probably wouldn't have, and WandaVision wasn't perfect. I wouldn't have gone that direction. The same thing with some of the Agatha Harkness Harkness stuff. I probably wouldn't have gone in those directions either. But but I loved how they, she created her children. uh, And that's kind of sets up some stuff from the comic books. I love that the emotional interplay that she had with, vision and how you could really feel her emotions I, I definitely caught my eyes being wet a couple of the episodes and in, in how the things happened i did not care for how it resolved because she was a huge villain and she got away with it by saying i'm sorry and she flew away to a cabin so i didn't like that so hopefully there will be some repercussions but i mean it's probably like a nine a nine out of ten for me with wandavision loki's my number three so uh Oh, wow. WandaVision or Hawkeye? Where do we go with this? Um, wow. Mm-hmm. WandaVision was released like that's their first Disney Plus's first jam with the Marvel stuff. And they picked a good one. That's really, really good. Just the diversity of everything we're all already talking about. Yeah, I like it a lot, but uh, I got to stick with Hawkeye. He's my number one. WandaVision is my number two. And like everything in, that in my brain told me, I should pick WandaVision as my number one. Nah, it's Hawkeye still. Eh, it's still Hawkeye. Even though, and look, I get the Christmas aspect, Tim. I get it. I do. But that was still a solid we'll series. We'll get there in a second. We'll get there in a second. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> but, what do you, so what no, do you think about WandaVision, Tim? So you can ask Jared. When the trailer for it dropped, I think it dropped during the Super Bowl a couple years ago. 
I texted Jared right away and I was just like, I could not be less interested in this show. <laughs> this looks like absolutely stupid. A 1950s sitcom and what what in the world are they thinking? Then I started to watch it, which I am glad they released the first two episodes together because if it was just the first episode, I probably would have been like, no, I'm not, I'm not watching this. But at the end of episode two, when that helicopter comes in, it reminded me of like Pleasantville when the guy looks over and sees the rose. It was very, very much like that. And it was kind of like, oh, so something's happening here. What I really liked about WandaVision the most, once again, not just that I enjoyed the show from all the different angles that they went with the, with the directing variety and doing like the modern family and doing the family ties and doing all, I, I loved all that. But what I loved the most about it was it did have a big impact on the MCU moving forward. They are really setting Wanda up to become probably the most powerful character in the MCU. She feels like she's got that swell of almost like a Phoenix-like character that does not know how powerful she is. It's going to come to be important down the road. We already know that she's going to be a multiverse of madness, and that's going to be something that's going to be important because right now, Strange is probably the most, the most powerful character that we see on a regular basis. And when he is seeking her help, it means he knows something that we don't know. So big impact on the MCU, very enjoyable to watch. It's my number one by a long shot, actually. Hawkeye came out recently. There was a lot of things to like in this show. I really enjoyed the conclusion. I've talked about this with Jared and Darren on their podcast. I thought that the finale was really well thought out. There was a lot of cool action set pieces. But I personally was disappointed with the whole the whole Kingpin. If, if Kingpin would have came in and been the same Kingpin that we saw in the Netflix series, then the Hawkeye would be number one for me. But the fact that we got Kingpin coming in with a Hawaiian shirt and a weird-looking goofy hat, it, it, it just wasn't the same Kingpin that we had in the Netflix series. That brought it down a peg for me, definitely. I enjoyed Kate. I enjoyed the fact that they brought Yelena back. I thought Kate and Yelena playing off of each other was very fun and cool. It makes me excited to see a pairing of those two for like a buddy cop TV show or maybe movie in the future with, for Marvel. So yeah, there was a lot of cool things in this, but the fact that Kingpin came in and we had been building and hyping up towards that for so long and he came in with a Hawaiian shirt and he's basically immortal. He can take a a car hitting him at 65 miles per hour. He can take exploding arrows, a gunshot, an arrow shot, and he's still good. For me, that just, that's how I feel about it. But show's good. Show's great. I give it a two. What you guys think? Yeah, it's right under WandaVision for me. It almost was number one because Hawkeye, you can watch it as like a six episode movie all together and just be enthralled in it. I think it was almost perfect from beginning to end that is the king book of the kingpin of the comic books i need you to just get over that he wears a hawaiian shirt in that comic book he is he's gonna, i knew he was gonna great he's gonna come back with a hat he's gonna come back with a hat or a hawaiian shirt oh see <laughs> i hope so. <laughs> oh, I, carry thought, on. I thought it was almost perfect from beginning to end i I did not care for Hawkeye in the fact that it was kind of front loaded with a lot of the dialogue and a lot of the setup stuff, the action sequences they kind of saved for a little bit further down the road. I also was not a big fan of the Christmas stuff. Overall, I enjoyed the series. So I put it as my number three. I would pretty much say there were things about it that I really liked, things about it that I didn't like. Yeah, I, I wasn't much on the on the Rescue Rangers shirt or the Gypsy Office and that kind of stuff. But um, overall, the character that we saw and the abilities that we saw from the Kingpin, where he could rip the car door off and and take an arrow and keep going, it, it almost like a Michael Myers type quality. That's kind of what we see from the Kingpin in the comic books. So I'm actually not upset about that kind of stuff. So yeah, overall, um, not my favorite of the Marvel series, just because of some of the lagging stuff there. But Overall, I did like the series. It's my number three. They hyped him up so much. And at the end of the day, he got his butt kicked. I've seen it before. It's I put that on my show a few weeks back. Two minutes. I've seen it Fire. before. <laughs> but they hyped this guy up so much, and he got his butt kicked by Kate Bishop, someone who's only been a hero. I agree. agree. That's a fair point. It should have been Hawkeye my number fighting. three. It should have been <laughs> Hawkeye fighting Kingpin. Agree. And Hawkeye should have got his butt agree. whipped by Kingpin. Yeah. I agree. That's agree. With that's my number three. Because Kate, Kate Bishop, just she was doing unrealistic yeah, stuff throughout yeah, the whole yeah. show. It's my number three because of that. 
take off that silly hat. I can't talk to you like a man. <laughs> so guys, thank you so much for joining. Oh, we're done? Oh, we're, we're running out of time. I see it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching the video with us today. You can look us up on Instagram and TikTok at Real Comic Book Cinema. We are also on Facebook. Jared, Darren, take it away. Check us out on the M6P.com and on all social medias. Just do a search for the M6P. You'll find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the stuff. Everyone, have a wonderful day. And I'm Kingpin signing off. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.